Okay, so if you don't have a basic understanding of powers and exponents, you're not going to be able to, to uh, solve this problem, and of course, you're not going to be able to get this right. But uh, don't despair because this problem is easy. As a matter of fact, you can do this problem in like three different ways. And if you could do this problem without the aid of a calculator, just use that supercomputer in between your ears. This thing up here, that's much better than AI. Everyone's talking about artificial intelligence. But, you know, I tell you, we really need to be talking about actual intelligence. So without the aid of a calculator, if you could figure this out, we got negative 9 to the 5th over 9 to the 7th. What is this equal to? Well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer uh, in just one second. And then, of course, I will walk through how to solve this problem. And I'm going to show you three different uh, approaches. And uh, you're going to want to know all three of these uh, techniques. But uh, we'll get to that in just one uh, moment. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it uh, really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, without using a calculator, we have negative 9. Uh, to the fifth power over nine to the seventh. What is the answer? Let's go to take a look at it right now. The correct answer is negative one uh, over 81, this fraction right here. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is great. That's going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that you are a professional certified expert in uh, taking powers of numbers. You understand uh, powers and exponents and the like. Uh, they probably won't know what that means, but it just sounds pretty cool, so tell them anyways. Let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. All right, so negative 9 to the 5th over 9 to the 7th. Okay, so we're dealing with powers and exponents, okay? Let's just make sure we understand some real basic things here. So 2 to the 3rd third power. Okay, this part right here, this big number is called the base, and this small number is called the exponent. This is the parts of a power. This entire thing is a power, so 2 to the third power uh, has, this entire thing has two components to it, right? The base, again, this bigger number down here, and then here is the exponents. And in mathematics, especially algebra, we have uh, properties of powers and exponents, okay, rules, if you will, that dictate how we, you know, deal with powers and exponents. So you need to know these rules. Uh, some of the rules look like this. A to the M times A to the N is equal to A to the M plus N. But I'm not going to get into these rules right now uh, too much. I will show you a couple of these rules in action because I don't want to overcomplicate how easy it is to do this problem here, okay? So let's get back to uh, just some uh, basics of powers, right? So 2 to the third power means what? It means take 2 and multiply it by itself 3. Whoop, not 3 times. See, you see how easy it is to make a mistake? I said 3 and I wrote 3. Take 2 and multiply it by itself 3 times, right? 2 times 2 times 2. That, of course, is 8. So 2 to the third power is 8. Okay, so this 3, that's the, uh, the exponent up here. That's just telling us take this number, the base, and multiply it by itself this many times. Okay, now another thing that we need to realize about this problem is this negative sign right here. All right, now this is a very common misunderstanding. I'm going to uh, show you the uh, full solution here in just one second. But for those of you that just need a quick review on powers and exponents, we're kind of doing that right now. So negative 2 squared, okay? This is not the same as parentheses negative 2 squared like so, okay? This right here, this negative 2 squared means take 2 and uh, square, take this 2 and square it, okay? And then this is going to be negative of that. This is really the opposite of 2 squared. So 2 squared is what? 2 times 2, which of course is 4. So this right here is negative 4. Now, this is completely different than negative 2 squared written with parentheses. 
This is saying, hey, take negative 2 and multiply it by itself two times. So negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, okay? Not negative. So here, uh, this 5 is not applying, this uh, exponent is uh, applying to a positive 9. Okay, so in other words, we're going to figure out the answer to this right here, and then this will be negative of that, okay? So really what, we're, what we have here is a fraction. It's a negative uh, over a positive, so the entire value or a sign of this fraction is going to be negative. All right, just want to kind of establish this uh, right off the bat because uh, if you don't see these things, if you don't kind of observe the problem before you get started, you're going to make an error. All right, let's go ahead and, and take the next step and actually solve this problem, uh, being that we have some basic understandings of powers and exponents. So here is our problem. We have negative 9 to the 5th is a, a negative... 9 times itself 5 times. So here is 9 times itself 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 9 to the 7th is down here in the denominator. It's 9 uh, times itself 7 times, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so here, what we can do is cross-cancel like factors. Let me give you a, an easier example. If I said reduce the fraction 10 over 20, well, we could think of the... Uh, uh, 10, the factors of 10 is 1 times 10, and 20 as 2 times 10, okay? Anytime you have, these are factors of 10, all right? Uh, factors of 20 would be 2 and 10, and factors, again, these are things being separated by multiplication. So when you have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, you can cross-cancel them, and then whatever's left is what is the simplified, you know, um, value of the problem, right? So like, for example... If we're going to reduce the fraction 10 over 20, I want to think about the factors. Okay, are there like factors? Yes, I can factor 10 as 1 times 10 and 20 as 2 times 10. I could cross cancel those 10 and I'm left with the fraction 1 half. So here we have all kinds of great opportunities to cross cancel uh, nines. But remember, it's 1 9 for 1 9. One, fact, one like factor per 1 like factor. In other words, this 9 has, can't cross cancel all these nines. It's just 1 for 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. But before we see the final version of the answer, please think about subscribing to my channel. Now, I can't make you subscribe, and I wouldn't, even if I could, I wouldn't do that because I want you to subscribe because you're like, you know what, this guy, he has helped me out. Uh, it, it does a tremendous amount of positive um, good for my channel. When you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button, I am grateful and I'm pretty lucky to have a good amount of subscribers and views on my channel. But every single one of those people like you that subscribe, I look at or I view as an, a new student. Okay, So if you're getting value from my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my new content. All right, let's move on to the problem or back to the problem. Okay, so now we talked about like factors. So we have all these nines we can cross cancel one for one. So this nine could cross cancel with that one, this one from this one, this one from this one, and so forth. Now we uh, kind of run out of all the nines up in the numerator. So you might be saying, well, there's no more nines, isn't there, or zero? No, one is always a factor, okay? So we just don't write it, but we'll uh, kind of make it very clear that one's a factor of any numbers, right? Or all numbers, excuse me. So there's one, okay, up in the numerator. So they're like, ah, I got rid of all the nines. Is that zero? No, they're just a one up there now. And what am I left down here in the denominator? After cross-canceling all these nines, I have nine times nine. And I have my negative sign right here, right? So I have negative one over nine times nine or nine squared, all right? So now this right here, is distilling down to negative 1 over 9 times 9, which, of course, is 81. Uh, 9 squared is 81, so this would be negative 1 over 81. All right, so this is the one approach you could take to do this problem. So even if you didn't know the rules of powers and exponents, uh, or if you forgot the rules of powers and exponents, but you had just kind of a good basic understanding of the pieces and parts of it, uh, kind of like what I reviewed here or reviewed a few moments ago, then you should have gotten, you know, this answer, which is the correct answer. So that's one approach. Let's take a look at two other approaches you could take to do this problem. 
Okay, so the first approach or the or the next approach you could take is noticing here that we're dividing powers, all right? So we have a power and we're dividing it by another power. So when you uh, have the same base, when we have a power being divided by another power and the bases are the same, in this case they are. In other words, if I had, let's say down here, I had uh, an eight, all right, done nine to the fifth power divided by eight to the seventh, I could not do what I'm going to show you here because the bases are different. But because the bases are the same, you're saying to yourself, oh, that YouTube math man told me I could do this. And that is we can subtract the exponents. So there is a rule in algebra. Let me show you the formal uh, rule here. And let me erase this here so we got a little bit of room to see it. Uh, it is a to the m over a to the n. See, these are two powers with the same base a is equal to a to the m minus n. Okay, so it's the numerator uh, exponent first and the denominator exponent second. Okay, so we could write this this way. So again, we're not going to... Um, this negative sign just means the whole value of this answer is going to be negative. So it's going to be 5, right, same base, minus 7. Okay, 5 minus 7. So this is negative 9, 2. The 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Now, we're not done yet here because uh, in mathematics, you never want to leave your answer with a negative exponent. So let's go down and take some more steps. So again, uh, we have a negative 9 to the negative 2. Now, one cool thing you could uh, do in, uh, when you're dealing with powers and exponents is you can think of uh, your powers as always being part of a fraction. So, for example, right here, I have, let me get rid of this not, negative 9 right here, it's just so it's not confusing. So, here I have 9 to the negative 2. Let's suppose I want to write this thing differently where I get rid of this negative uh, exponent, right? Well, if I think of this as a fraction, I can just put that over 1, all right? Uh, uh, 9 to the negative 2 over 1 is the same thing as 9 to the negative 2, right? So anytime you want to make a fraction of anything, if I give you the number 5, you're like, ah, oh, you know, that's not a fraction. Well, if I put it over 1, now it is, right? So I'll put this over 1 uh, because I want to show you something here. So when we want to change the sign of an exponent in a power, all we need to do is to... Uh, take that entire power and move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? So if I pick up this 9 to the negative 2 and I write it down here in the denominator, okay, right now in the numerator up here on top, it's negative, but if I write this down here like this, 1 over 9, I put this whole thing down in the denominator down here, it becomes positive, Okay, so anytime you want to change the sign of an exponent, just pick that whole thing up and move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. And if it's negative, it becomes positive. It's, if it's positive, it becomes negative. This is another major property of powers and exponents. All this stuff you definitely need to learn. And if you need help with this stuff, uh, check out like my Algebra 1 course. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Also, I have tons of videos on my channel that go over this stuff as well. All right, so remember, I stated that you don't want to leave your answer with the negative exponent. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, well, let's go ahead and move this down uh, into the denominator. So I want to pick up this 9 to the negative 2. I'll move it downstairs like this. And now I have negative 1 over 9 squared, which, of course, is a positive 81. So that would be negative 1 over 81. Okay, same answer. But uh, again, a different approach using uh, the rules for division of powers. All right, let's take a look at another approach. And this will be our final approach here. So now that you understand how to move powers, right, I could be like, all right, I have 9 to the 5th. Uh, and of course, this is a negative 9 fifth, but I could take this whole 9 to the 5th and move it downstairs, right, down to the denominator. So when I do that, though, and notice this is 9 to the positive 5. If I pick this whole thing up and I move it down here, remember the sign of your exponent is going to become op opposite, right? So if it's positive, it's going to become negative. It's, if it's negative, it's going to become positive. And by the way, you can move from the denominator to the numerator, numerator to the denominator. So not a problem here. But what I want to do is move this 9 to the 5th down into the denominator. So I could do that. And when I move it, uh, this... Uh, 
this positive 5 becomes a negative 5, just like this, all right? And uh, well, let's just kind of be clear about this. This negative uh, sign right here is just a negative 1, okay? It's really negative 1 times 9 to the 5th, okay? So don't confuse that negative sign, um, you know, with this power. So I'm going to move this down into the denominator, so I have 9 to the negative 5th. So negative 1 over 9 to the 7th times 9 to the 5th is my new expression. Now we have this other property of uh, powers and exponents that says when you're multiplying powers with the same bases right here, of course we have the same base, uh, we simply just need to add the exponents. The formal rule is a to the m times a to the n. Again, same powers with the same base. The answer is a to the m plus n. So I'm going to take and add these numbers. 7 plus negative 5 is a positive 2. So now I'm left with negative 1 over 9 squared, which of course is 81, right? 9 squared is 81, and I have negative 1 over a positive 81. So this is a third way to do this problem. Okay, so as you can tell, there is definitely a lot to learn when it comes to uh, working with powers and exponents. Uh, this is pretty serious stuff, especially for those of you out there that are studying algebra, okay? And uh, if you don't get this right, you're going to make a lot of errors. So the way to kind of master this is, one, get uh, great, clear, and understandable instruction. Okay, that's what I'm passionate about trying to do. Uh, to deliver. But once you have that instruction, okay, uh, what do you need to do? Well, you need to practice, okay? If you don't practice, you're not going to develop your own kind of strengths, okay? You can't watch me do problems and expect that you're going to kind of master the skills all on your own. So you got to practice. And when you do practice, you know, you want to start with easy problems and then kind of work your way up to more challenging problems. So put in the effort and it will all pay off. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.